Hi everyone! It's great to see you again. Are you having a great day? Are you having a good day, Charlie? Yeah! I'm having an amazing day! That's brilliant! We're looking forward to learn more about our Christian hero today. Can you remember the Christian hero we learned about the last time? It was Mary Slessler! That's right. I wonder will she get to Africa? I hope so, so she can teach all those people about God. Well, let's listen and find out more about our Christian hero today. Yay! What has been the most exciting day of your life so far? Maybe it's been a birthday. Maybe it has been your first day at school. Or maybe it was a day whenever you went on a really exciting holiday. Well, Mary was soon going to have a very exciting day in her life. Maybe the most exciting day of her life so far. Mary had been dreaming of becoming a missionary in Calibre. Can you remember where that is? That's right, it's in Africa. And can you remember what a missionary is? That's right, it is someone who goes to tell people about the Lord Jesus. And a missionary can have many different jobs. Mary knew that that's where God wanted her to be. And she told other people and they thought she was crazy. But Mary loved God and she wanted to obey him. She knew that God wanted her to be in Calibre, and so she began to prepare to be a missionary. One of the things that she did was that she trained to become a teacher, and she would talk to other people about what she would do whenever she would be a missionary in Africa. Finally, the day came when she would actually travel to Calibre. I'm sure she was really nervous, but I'm sure she was really excited at the same time. She got on this huge boat that was called the SS Ethiopia. This was the day that she had been waiting for since she was a little girl. Finally, she was going to be a missionary in Caliber. The journey would take a few weeks and the day that she left Scotland, it was very cold. It was damp, it was dark, it was dreary. But as she traveled further south, she began to feel the air get warmer and the skies got brighter until finally it was very, very hot. I wonder, can you fan yourself to make yourself cool down? And then they went up one of the rivers until finally they arrived at Calibre. Along the shore, as she stood on the boat, she could see all sorts of animals and plants that she never would see in Scotland. I wonder, have you been to Africa before? Maybe you haven't, but maybe you've seen pictures of it. And she saw all sorts of different animals. Can you spot some in the picture? Yes. She saw hippos, parrots, leopards, crocodiles. I wonder, can you make some of the noises that those animals make? Everything was new and exciting as Mary watched people travel up the river in canoes. Finally, she was here in this place. She was here exactly where God wanted her to be. And she was so excited about her new life as a missionary. Mary had been on the boat for five weeks and I'm sure she was so glad to get off that boat. She stayed in a place called Duke Town. Duke Town is where Mary would start her missionary journey. While she was there, she taught a class of boys. Many of the people in Calibre had heard about Jesus before because there had always been lots of missionaries there. Mary's life here was very different from the life that she lived in Scotland. Maybe you can think of some ways in which it was different. Mary began to learn the language so that she could speak to the people in their own language so that she could tell them about Jesus. She learned how to travel in a canoe so that she could go places and she also dressed differently as well. It was much warmer there in Calibre in Duke Town than what it was in Scotland. In Scotland people wore very fancy clothes but here Mary's clothes were very simple. She just wore a simple dress, a dress that would keep her cool. She also cut all of her hair off and in Scotland she had this long curly hair but now it was so warm that she didn't really need to have all her hair so she had it all cut off and not only that but she didn't need to wear boots or shoes anymore. She would walk about with no socks and very often in her bare feet. Occasionally Mary would travel into the jungle and it was there that she would meet people that hadn't really heard about Jesus. She met people that needed to know Jesus 
for themselves. They needed to know Jesus as their own saviour. As Mary learned more and more of the language, she began to go on hiking trips to the different villages that were in the jungle. There she would spend time with the people and she would learn more about what they did believe. In one of these villages, there was another missionary and his name was John Bailey. One day when Mary was with him, after he had preached a sermon to the people about Jesus, he asked her if she would like to say a few words. Mary read from John chapter 5 and she told the people a story of how Jesus healed someone. She then told them that Jesus could heal them from their sickness. He was the only one who could take their sin away. He was the only one who could forgive them for all of their sins. While in Jugtown, Mary would help at the mission house and she would continue to teach in the school. She would also visit the local women and she would teach them about Jesus. She was getting better and better at learning the Epic language and communicating with the people there. As Mary was visiting these many different villages in the jungle, she was no longer happy to stay in Duke Town. She wanted to go into the villages in the jungle where people didn't know about Jesus. She wanted to tell them about Jesus. These were places where missionaries had never been before. Some people said it was too dangerous. They thought she was crazy. You can't go there. You might not come back, they said to her. But Mary kept praying and trusting God to guide her. She was determined to go into these villages. But then Mary got very, very sick with malaria. She was so sick. And after being three years in Caliber, she actually had to leave. She had to go back to Scotland to get better again. I wonder, did Mary ever get back to Caliber? Will she be able to come back and to tell people about Jesus in those villages in the jungle? You'll have to wait to find out more.
Mary was in Scotland recovering from malaria. Did she ever get back to Africa? Yes, she did. She travelled back to Calibre and she travelled back to Duke Town. But when she got there, the missionaries there told her that she was no longer staying there, that she was being sent to Old Town. Old Town was a place, a village that was in the jungle. And Mary knew that God was answering her prayer of being able to go into the jungle and to tell the people there about Jesus because they had never heard about Jesus before. And so Mary prepared to make that journey to live in Old Town. She would be the only missionary there. But Mary would not be on her own because God was with her. God had a very special reason and a purpose for her to be there. It was all part of God's plan. When Mary arrived in Old Town, it was very different from Duke Town. Just outside the mission house, there was a pole with bones hanging from it. This was not the welcome that Mary had got when she went to Duke Town. This place was very different. Many of the people there believed in evil spirits and Mary saw them do things that really disturbed her, things that made her really sad. One of those things was how they treated twin babies. When twin babies were born, the people in the villages thought that it was evil. They thought that they would bring bad luck. And so they would kick the mother and her twin babies out of the village. Sometimes they would take the babies and they would leave them lying in the jungle or even worse, they would kill them just to get rid of them. This made Mary really, really sad. And sometimes she felt angry. These people did not realise that every precious baby comes from God that God gives life, that God created these special babies and that God has made all people, that everyone is precious to God, that everyone is loved by God. One day a baby was left on Mary's doorstep and he was crying. Whenever she asked, no one knew how this baby came to be there. She couldn't find out who owned this baby. And so this baby came to live with Mary. I wonder, can you pretend to rock a baby? Maybe you've done this before, but we'll just rock the baby really gently. Can you do that? Soon Mary had many other babies living with her because these babies were just abandoned and left to die. And Mary would take them and she would look after them. One day Mary rescued her first set of twins. One was a boy and one was a girl. But the little baby boy died and Mary was left with the little girl. She called her Janie. Mary's youngest sister was called Janie and so she called this little baby Janie. Janie became one of Mary's daughters and Mary had adopted many babies and many children. She was looking after them. Rescuing and taking care of babies was a big job. It's a big job to look after a baby. Never mind have lots of babies to look after. But that wasn't the only job that Mary did. Mary also helped people that were very sick. She would give them medicine and she would pray for them and she became famous. The people in the villages called her Ma and whenever someone was sick, they would shout, run Ma, run. Can you say that with me? Run Ma, run. Mary cared for them like a mother. That's why they called her Ma. And so when someone was sick, she would go and she would help them. Sometimes people would even call her if there was a big fight or a big argument. She was there to help them with all sorts of different problems that they had. There was a chief who lived about 30 miles from where Mary lived in her village. He heard about her and he wanted her to come and visit. And so she agreed that she would go and visit. And so she got into her canoe and she had several of her children there with her. But as they were traveling in the canoe down the river, there came a tornado. There was a lot of wind and rain and it was really, really scary. They were in the middle of this huge storm and there were trees and bits of trees flying around. There were canoes flying around. And Mary and her children were in their canoe and they were praying, praying that God would help them. Mary gathered her children around her and she said to them, come, let's sing to the Lord. And as they were singing on their canoe, the storm began to calm. The storm began to calm until finally it passed by. During this storm, their roof had blew off. But by the time the storm was over, they were soaking wet. But they were so happy that they were safe 
and the storm had passed by and they praised God for answering prayer. And because of all of this, Mary got very sick. She had a high temperature for a few days, but after a few days of rest, she did get better. But these storms did not stop Mary from telling people about Jesus. She would travel into the jungle and to these different dangerous places on her own, sometimes with her children and sometimes not. Nothing would stop her. There was one village that she really wanted to go to. It was called O Ko Young. Can you say that with me? O Ko Young. When she shared it with the people in the village where she lived, they begged her not to go. Please, please don't go there. The people there are so evil. They will hurt you and your children. Don't go there, they said to her. I wonder, did Mary go? Was she safe there? If she did go, what would happen when she did get there? You'll have to wait to next time, to part three, to find out more. That's amazing she got to go to Caliber to tell other people about Jesus. That's right, Charlie. And she was able to rescue all those babies as well. Her life was in danger and she was so, so brave. I wish I was as brave as her. Maybe sometimes, boys and girls, you don't feel brave. But you know, like Mary in her story, God can help you and you can be brave and to stand up for God and tell others about the Lord Jesus. But Mary's going to have to be really brave in our next episode. <gasps> what's going to happen? Oh, what's going to happen? We're going to have to come back for our next episode and find out what happens to Murray. See you next time. Bye. Bye.